the word of God gives hope to the hopeless. Dear sisters and brothers, I wish to welcome you to our Bible Reflections today. Today is the memorial of St. Thomas Aquinas, priest, doctor of the church, or rather, the angelic doctor. Today, Mark tells us about the encounter Jesus had with his disciples on that stormy, turbulent journey. Jesus asked his disciples to take him that they may cross over to the other side of the sea. Then, on their way crossing over, they experienced a terrible wind, a terrible storm, a great turbulence. And Mark tells us that Jesus was, you know, resting his head on the cushion and he was sleeping very comfortably. Then the disciples said to him, Teacher, are you not concerned that we are going to perish? And Jesus woke up, spoke to the wind, commanded the wind to be quiet, and there was great calm. And Jesus asked them, Don't you have faith yet? And the people were filled with awe. There are so many lessons to learn from this passage. The first thing I like us to think about is about the reality of crossing over. Sometimes we are standing in the wrong place, or we may have been in a place that is already saturated. Sometimes we need to make a move. Because most of us are just in a certain place, in a certain relationship, in a certain business, without even thinking about you know, increasing our horizon. Being contented is not synonymous with being lazy. God created us, as we said yesterday, that we may grow. So it's always necessary for us to cross over. Don't just remain in one place and keep on complaining. Things are not good for me. Things are not good for me. But you are just in the same place. How do you, you know, expect a new result, while you are still using old method. If you want to have a new result, a better result, a successful result, if I may put it that way, then you have to try a new method. You can't be using old key to open a new door. The door will not be opened. So there is this necessity for us to really cross over movement. Movement is, you know, it's a human act. Because most of us are just standing in one place like a tree. Don't be like a tree. Move. When things are not working the way they should, and you have done your best as a human being, you have prayed, try to ask God for what He wants you to do. But don't just remain there and say, you know, keep on complaining. Move. You are not a tree. Move. <laughs> it's important for us to, to know this, that Jesus was very flexible. He moved from place to place. He asks his disciples to take him, that they may cross over. And this brings me to the second thing I want to talk about, and that is about the obedience of the disciples and the apostles. Remember that Jesus requested that they take him over, to cross over, even though there were so many people there. The attention was great. But even though the attention was great, Jesus knew the time to detach. He knew the time to separate. He knew the time to break away from the, the great crowd. Ordinarily, we like to be where things are happening, where people are dancing and the attention is all there. But Jesus wanted them to move away. The good thing about the disciples is that they did not argue with Jesus. They did not say, okay, let us remain here and enjoy the popularity and the fame. No, they did not say that. They were very open to his request. And they obeyed the request he made because the Bible said they took him, they took Jesus into their boat. And that brings me to the third thing I want to talk about. Wherever we go, do you bring Jesus along with you? Or do you just go on your human strength and human intelligence? In my midday prayer today, I prayed for students. There's always a difference between intelligence and wisdom. Wherever you go, in your relationship, in your business, in your marriage, in your education, in your profession, in your vocation, do you bring Jesus along with you? Or do you just go alone? I form the habit of putting uh, sacramentals in my pocket wherever I go. Of course, that is not the charm 
But each time I look at the rosary, it reminds me that, oh, I am still in union with our Blessed Mother Mary. I'm in union with our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm in union with the angels and saints. It gives me confidence. So the question is, wherever we go, do we bring Jesus along with us? Or do we just go alone, believing that we can do those things as human beings through our human powers? But let me tell you, those who try to do things through their human intelligence and energy and capabilities and skills, most of them fail, if not all of them. It's always good to bring God along wherever you go. Make a space for God. And that's actually what is humility. Humility means that you know your place. I know my place. And our place is that we are nothing without God. And since we are nothing without God, we have to create space for Him and bring Him along with us wherever we go. Because with God, everything will work according to His gracious will. The fourth point I like us to think about is that Christians, that we are Christians, does not mean that we are exempted from relational turbulence or business crises or family trials or sickness or misfortunes, whatever we may call it. And by the way, God did not create the world perfect and he did not create the world bad or imperfect. Rather, he created the world very good. So sickness, misfortunes and all that these are part of life. They are not, you know, extraordinary, but these are part of what St. Paul we say, the groaning of creation, giving birth continuously. God is still recreating us. But the fact is that as Christians, we are not exempted from sickness, from misfortunes, from sufferings, from crises, from struggles, from challenges. We are not exempted from that. But that's one thing that I like also remember that even though we experience all these things, the presence of Jesus makes us victorious. It makes us triumphant over these problems. And Jesus was with them. Imagine that. Jesus was with them and they were experiencing this turbulence and stormy wind. Jesus may be in your life, but it doesn't mean that you're exempted from this. But one thing that we are very sure that when Jesus is in your life, things may shake you. Your life may shake even almost breaking, but God gives you, through the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of resilience. Your turbulence, your crisis, your trials, your challenges, they may shift you, you know, they may shake you, but they will never break you. They will never break you because you are with God and God is unbreakable. God is absolute firm and he grants us the same grace for resilience when he is allowed to be with us. Because God will never force himself on us. God respects our freedom. But remember that as Christians, as I said, we are not exempted from misfortunes and sufferings. But even in the moments of these things, God is with us and Jesus is walking with us. But the question is, what is our response or what is our attitude in the moments of our turbulence? Are we overwhelmed by our situation, by our crisis, in such a way that we forget that God is with us? Because it's very easy for us to forget that, oh, Jesus is walking with me, even in the moments of my crisis, that I do not focus on the crisis. Of course, I recognize the crisis, but I focus on Christ. So what is our attitude? We run away from God, we run to the native doctors, or do we remain with Jesus in the moments of our crisis? Those who run to human beings, those who run to Babalao, to Abolario, to quack doctors, to native doctors, you are actually increasing your problem. You are increasing your problem when you lay down your problems in front of human beings. Because the only one who can give solution to our problems is J-E-S-U-S. So if you want your life to become more miserable, even as it is already, then entrust your worries into human beings or into the hands of quack doctors and medicine men and women. Then there's going to be a time when you are going to cry and regret whatever you may have done. But that is not our prayer. But the fact is that what is my attitude in the moments of my crisis? I pray harder or I stop praying. 
Our knowledge of God, of course, determines our reaction and our response in the moments of crisis. The more you know God, the more you have the knowledge that God is absolute, that God has uh, absolute dominion, absolute authority, power, and sovereignty. If you have such knowledge, in the moments of your crisis, you will not give up because you know that God is bigger than your problems. I don't tell God I have big problems, but I tell my problems, I have got a big God. Look at what happened in the gospel today. Jesus has that sovereign, absolute authority and dominion. As soon as he spoke to the wind, the Bible said there was peace, there was calm. There will be peace. There will be order. There will be harmony. There will be calm in your business, relationship, marriage, life. If only you will call on Jesus to come to your rescue. Many of us are sinking. Many of us are experiencing turbulence, financial turbulence, relational turbulence, uh, business turbulence, professional turbulence, vocational turbulence. Name them. Many of us are experiencing emotional turbulence. But who do we go to? Tell your friends, you become a subject for gossip. But tell God, he will never divulge your secret to anyone. The best person you can divulge or you can tell your secrets to is God. Because God will never discuss your secret with anyone. But tell human beings, hmm, your problem will be increased and multiplied. So dear brothers and sisters, let us remember that when all these things were happening, Jesus was sleeping in a very peaceful way. That's to tell you that nothing can shake God. In Jesus is a source of peace. In Jesus is a source of calm and serenity. Whatever that is going on in your life, entrust them into the hands of Jesus and you will see that everything will change. Thank you for listening to this reflection. And please, please, do well to share it. Please, do well to share it. God bless you. Thank you.